Hey everybody, welcome. In this episode, we are going to continue our discussion on object-oriented programming. We're going to learn three important pieces of object-oriented programming. What are they, you might ask? I thought you'd never ask. Inheritance, polymorphism, and encapsulation. So we're going to try to understand these concepts. In this video, we might go hands-on with one or all of them or whatever in the next video, but then we're going to get back to some more data structures and algorithms. So let's just talk about the first one that I want to talk about, and that is inheritance. So this is really like what it sounds like. I mean, if you think of about what you inherit from your parents, there might be different attributes about yourself that you could say, oh, you know, I have my mom's eyes or whatever it might be. So different pieces come from a parent. And the same thing works inside of object-oriented programming. So when we have a class, let's say it is camera, we might define a parent class or what would be often called a base class. Let's just say it's called security equipment. We can define things in the security equipment class that'll automatically exist inside any camera objects we create. So for example, we might put an attribute active in here, or we might put a method in here such as activate. And then if we define security equipment as the base class for camera, then anytime we instantiate a camera, those things are going to exist. So let's say we make a few cameras. I'm just gonna make them look like, like the little digital emoji version of a camera. I'm terrible at drawing anyways, so. All right, so each one of these is going to have an active attribute and you could invoke activate on each one of these camera objects. So the way you do this in code is going to vary from programming language to programming language, but it might look something like this. Wherever you define a class such as camera, you have the option to say extends and then put another class here. So class camera extends security equipment. You know what, I think a better word for this would be device, security device. Just because equipment sounds plural, which I don't like, so security device, I think of one thing. Back to what we were saying with this code here, you would then put your curly braces and define your class, everything that every object is going to have inside of here. Everything from security device will automatically exist on those objects. This is how you would do it in Java. In Python, it's going to look like this, where we have parentheses and we put the base class here. and then a colon. And then you would define your class indented one line here. Now, just to make sure we're all on the same page with terminology, this is said to be the base class, and this is said to be the derived class. You might hear some other words to describe the same concepts, but these are probably the words that I will use. You may also hear parent class, child class, or something else. So let's define camera a little bit more. Let's say it has a serial number and maybe a position that it's pointing at. Well, right now, every single camera is going to have an active field, an activate method, a serial number, and a position. So why don't we just take these and put them in the camera and then we don't have to worry about the base class? Well, the real benefit here is if you have numerous classes that are all going to have some similarities. So an example here, is we might make another class and this one is going to be called a sensor. So notice that a sensor is also usually considered a security device, but it's different than a camera. That being said, a camera and a sensor has a lot of things in common, such as whether or not it's currently active, you know, calling the API to turn the device on. These are all things that are shared between camera and sensor. You can put stuff specific to sensors inside of the sensor class. Now, when you create a camera object, 
and then you create a sensor object. These objects here, camera and sensor, they are both considered to be of type security device. And this introduces the concept of polymorphism. When we use inheritance and two classes derived from the same class, they are of the same type when you look at them a little bit more generally. If you say, hey, these are both security devices, that works. Are they both cameras? No. Are they both sensors? No, obviously. Only the cameras are gonna be cameras, only the sensors are gonna be sensors. But if we just be a little less specific and treat these cameras and sensors as security devices, then we're gonna introduce some magical things. So as an example, we could add these both to a list or an array list, and we can assign this to a variable. I usually like to name it whatever the base class is, plural, since it's a list. So it'll look something like this inside of Python. If you're in C Sharp or Java, it might look like so. You'll have an array list or a list interface type of type security device. And then you would give it a name such as security devices. So in those languages, the variables are typed. So you have to say what type it is ahead of time. It's going to be a list of security device. Python don't give a crap. So it's just a list. You can put whatever you want in there. But just for our sanity and just to keep our code safe, we are going to just put anything that derives from security devices inside of this list. And now we can address all of the cameras and all of the sensors at one time telling them to do something. So let's just create a loop. Oh, why does that literally happen every day? So I'm just going to say for security device, in security devices. Should have picked shorter names, geez. All right, so that's how we would define the loop. And then what we could do is we could invoke a shared method inside of this loop. So we could say security device dot activate. So the first iteration security device is going to refer to this camera object. Looks like a capital C, but it's a lowercase c there referring to this object here. Then the second iteration, it's going to refer to the sensor object. Since they both are going to have an activate method since it's defined in the base class, this code will work. And the benefit here is that we can actually be more specific and define new activate methods in these derived classes and this loop will invoke the more specific version. So the way to think about this is you're basically saying, hey, every single security device, I want you to activate. I don't care how you activate, as long as you activate. <laughs> so we can define basically an overrided version, activate inside a camera, and an overrided version inside of sensor. So in here, this might reset the camera's position or do something. And in here, this might configure the sensor's distance or connect it to the loudspeaker. So if someone walks past the sensor, it's just like where, 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 where. So yeah, that's polymorphism, treating a bunch of derived classes as a base class. And if there is the option to invoke a more specific method or access a more specific attribute, for example, if we redefined active in here, then it will do the more specific one. Okay, the last thing is encapsulation. All right, let's just take a look at the camera here just to keep it simple. And I want to look at this serial number. Well, let's say the standard structure for a serial number is a few letters, a hyphen, and then a few numbers. You can think of this as one entity, just a serial number. However, when we define that class, we can make it so that we're basically hiding the inner details. So internally, these might be stored as two separate components. Let's say this one is the serial number code, and then this one is the serial number ID. Forgot to write encapsulation up here. So let's draw out an example of what this might look like. We have the serial number ABC, 
one, two, three. This is assigned in two separate variables, A, B, C, and one, two, three. When we set this data, we pass it in as one string. When we get this data, we get it back as one string. So what is the purpose of this and why would we want to do something like this? Well, the main thing is that we can change the internals, but the way we work with the data stays the same. We're always just going to use serial number. Another word that you could use to think about this is an abstraction. We're abstracting away the internals and we just have to worry about how to use a camera object. The example I always give is if you're driving, you don't have to worry about how that engine works or how all the belts are doing things. All you got to worry about is turning the steering wheel and pressing the gas. It might help someday if you're going to be working on that car to know the internals. Same thing here, if you're going to be working on the camera class, you might want to know the internals here. However, just to use a camera object, it does not matter to us how this information is stored. All we care about is the interface to working with cameras. And that is what encapsulation allows. The way you actually do this is with what's known as a property. You can do this inside of Python, you can do it inside of C-sharp. Java, the typical way to do this is actually to use two methods, a getter method and a setter method. So you'll have something like get serial number, so get serial number, and this is going to return a, a string and then you would have something like set serial number. And this one is actually going to take an argument. I can't write. All right. And this you would pass in a string serial number. I'm out of room, but you get the point. We're going to have two methods to find inside of this camera class that act as the gateways. That would be this arrow to get the data and this arrow to set the data. Properties are nice though because you don't actually have to invoke them like methods or pass data in. We treat it just like a variable. So when we are working with a camera object, let's define a camera real quick. We would assign a serial number like so. Camera dot serial number and then we would just assign it a value. We don't have to use parentheses or do anything different. Even though there's some processing going behind the scenes, we treat it just like a standard variable. Some people actually don't like this because it is hiding some stuff. We don't exactly know what's happening when we just use a variable like this because it could be a property and it could have some side effects. However, that is also one of the powers of object-oriented programming, which is hiding the inner details. So whichever one you prefer, that's up to you. But here's the cool thing is when you first define your class, you can define this as just a normal attribute. It's just a variable for this object. It's defined right here, serial number inside of the class. And then if later on you need to actually do some extra processing, you can change this as to a property inside of the camera class and all of the calling code stays exactly the same. So it's really easy just to start as a variable and then update it later without having to refactor all of your code. So there you have it, your introduction to inheritance, polymorphism, and encapsulation. Please stay tuned for the next video because we're going to continue learning everything we can about computers, computer science, and data structures and algorithms. I hope you guys are excited because I am. And also apologies if my hair was all out of whack today. Me and my wife did it last night. It was a little scary, so stay tuned and please be sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.